So this is going to be kind of a weird video. Uh, no real goal in mind here, but I've got two Game Boy Pockets that I use for parts, um, either for other systems or what have you. And I have this one that I've pretty much stripped bare at this point. Uh, I was stripping off the LCD connector for another project here, and I figured, ah, oh, while I'm here, I'll strip off the rest of the parts that I need and see if I can't fix the other unit that I've been using as parts. Uh, so this is what's left of this one. There's really not that much left. Um, the shell is here. It's still got a couple usable parts, and it's a little bit gross, but whatever. Um, actually, I will need these. And I'll need that in just a second, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, this is the other one that I've been using as parts. Uh, the screen in here obviously has the uh, reflector removed. Uh, it was backlit at one point, but unfortunately the ribbon cable on it is broken. And uh, well, as you can see, this one's missing a few parts as well. Uh, on this Game Boy Pocket, I originally removed the cart connector to repair a damaged Game Boy Light, which I think was definitely worth it. And I had removed the volume wheel for, I don't know, probably a Game Boy Color, uh, fixing that. And I removed the negative battery terminal for probably the same Game Boy Color. Uh, I don't remember what happened to the power switch, but, and I don't recall at all what happened to the speaker. But since I never desoldered it, it probably just broke off. Uh, but either way, here we go. I might as well get this thing fixed before I go any further. And um, yeah, I already desoldered the power switch while I was desoldering the the uh, LCD connector. So what the hell? Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing going. I just spent a few minutes to desolder the cart connector. Now this one I'm not going to really bother fixing. I do have the CPU and I can swap it back on, but this thing did have some decent water damage on it. And while it did work before I started stripping parts off it, I just figured that might be temporary at best and I'll just, I'll use it for parts because I think it's more valuable to me that way. Uh, anyway, this one, the most important part, cart reader, snaps right in and then I just got to solder these down. Uh, we got to add this guy back on should just pop in there and this will get soldered on there and then I'll need to find a volume wheel and a speaker but otherwise that should be it uh, but let me go ahead and get started already got the soldering iron heated up And really, I just want to get this together so I can not feel bad about putting it away and taking it off my desk uh, while I work on another project that I actually want to work on. Eventually, this thing is getting a, um, hopefully, an LCD mod, assuming it works. But I'm getting ahead of myself at this point. I also never checked. Hopefully none of the pins on this cart reader are damaged. It's a little bit too late to uh, go back unless I want to start desoldering. So as far as removing this cart reader from my old Game Boy, I ended up just sitting here for 10 minutes with a solder sucker going over every pin. And that seems to work. I've done that a few times at this point. Okay. So now at this point, I just got to clean up that flux on the two things I just soldered. Um, oh yeah, power switch, duh. You know, before I solder this on, you know what might make sense? Let's clean it. 
It's already easy enough to take apart. And good thing too, because this thing is filthy. Game Boys almost universally. Sorry, that was probably pretty loud. That's right next to the camera. Uh, Game Boys pretty much universally have gross, dirty power switches. I'm not sure if it was just... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why they are the way they are, but it's due to the design, I believe. And... Um, because every, every time you switch a Game Boy on, it's... Oh, shit. Where'd that go? Every time you switch a Game Boy on, it is switching the entire current of the Game Boy through that power switch. And uh, DC current, unlike AC current, tends to arc when you do that. Even though it's only like 100 milliamps at 3-something volts, uh, it's still... I don't know, it's, it still adds up, and over the years it gets pretty pretty gross. I'm going to solder this on before I, can before I finish cleaning it, just because holding it's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay. Hot air would actually... Oh, you know, I should have. I regret not doing it now. There we go. I'm going to use some solder braid on these contacts so I can solder it down flat. I have no idea why there's so much solder on these. Maybe that was just a side effect of how I desoldered the switch in the first place. There we go. Now, there we go. Now it's actually sitting in the pe uh, pegs, the locating holes. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Continue cleaning it. It's just so much easier to hold the Game Boy than it is that bare switch. Still pretty gross. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm not too worried. It's way better than it was. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's just going to get dirty again anyway. All right, and now these covers are directional, and I cannot remember which way this one goes. Hopefully it's not that big of a deal. And I think it goes like this. I mean, obviously I think that, otherwise I'd be doing it the other way. Right. 
volume wheel. So thankfully, I actually have a stock of these things. I'm not going to use the one with the broken leg. And these are brand new aftermarket, of course. That should just go in there. Oh, but it looks like those need to be desoldered. I think I'll have better luck with the solder sucker. How convenient. It's right here. Oh, and I just realized at some point I was uh, removing this port. It's not completely desoldered, but certainly not for lack of trying. No idea what I was using this port for, or trying to use this port for. Ta-da! And before I solder that down, I've got to make these flat. The pins on this port are a little bit long as I just shorted them against that capacitor. that back down in just a second. So I put way too much solder on these pins. No amount of flux will help me. Or solder that back. Oh no! Just gonna double check something real quick. So I'm pretty sure that connects to that. Nope. At least not on this water damaged one. Not on that side. Nope. Okay, now I don't feel bad about clearing that short. What did I drop? Oh, the shell. Okay. This 
So I suppose I should have uh, trimmed these pins down a little. Probably would have saved some time. I'm going to have to desolder, resolder this thing. But it's easy enough. I'll just do all five. What the hell? There, short's gone. Put that capacitor back. It's like I never even desoldered it. All right, I think we're done. Oh, wait, nope. Forgot this side. Now we're done. So I do actually have the battery cover for this silver shell, so I think that's the shell I want to use, instead of this pink one. I even have a screen around here somewhere. There we go. Though this screen is not long for this Game Boy. I got plans for this screen. Oh shoot, I forgot a speaker, huh? Yep. No matter. I have one right here. It's even the right speaker. A little bit corroded. It's the other one I have. The other one I have, I think this is from a GBA? I don't know. Either way it fits, so. But this one doesn't have any... Eh, we'll use the pocket speaker. Because I don't know how the caps are on this unit. Just removing the remnants of the original speaker wire. Or attempting to. I'm not having any luck though. I got that one too. Okay, just kidding. Not having any luck, I can't get the solder sucker not a good angle. Mm. 
And I managed to misplace my flush cutters, so that's cool. Oh, just kidding. It's under the shell I just put up here. Brushing never works out for me, and yet, I still try it every time. Whatever. Now we're done. This would go in here with screws if I knew where they were. I have some though, but this isn't staying together long, so it doesn't matter too much. Just long enough to test. Where's my Game Boy Pockets? Here's one. Oh yeah! So everything seems to work, so I will call that a success. Granted, this isn't the end game for this pocket. Uh, I just needed a working pocket um, for a few mods that I have planned. I do have another few, but I didn't necessarily want to take apart my good clean examples. I always like to have at least one unmodified console, so there we go. Uh, I'll go find some screws, put this together, and I'll pull this screen for the project I've planned and uh, go from there. Thanks for watching, guys.